Hello. Uh, today, my speech is going to be on animals in captivity. Um, at first, I'd like everybody to close their eyes and you know, just imagine your, your favorite animal. If you don't have one, but just imagine you're any wild animal out there. All right, now, imagine you've just been captured. All right, you go from being in your home, that's the wide open jungle, desert, whatever animal you are, wherever you live, and now you're living in this new captivity. Four walls, not much space anymore, right? All right, so you guys can all open up your eyes. Now, how do, you, how do you feel after that? How do you feel knowing that you've just been captured, you're put into the small confinement, and you'll never again be able to venture outside your walls? You feel like you're now, you feel like you're in prison now, right? Um, animals like elephants, tigers, apes, you know, countless others, all suffer the same fate every day. They all do it. All right? Some are just put into zoos, others are put into circuses and forced to perform. All right. Um, one major animal that everybody knows about is the orca whale. San Diego Zoo, you know, not the zoo, my bad, um, SeaWorld. And they have Shamu. Um, one whales, orca whales can grow up to be around 22,000 pounds. That's one of the heaviest ones they've ever had in captivity that they've weighed, 22,000 pounds. That is a gigantic whale. That is a massive creature to be locked in their small pool. And basically, it's not even a pool for it. That's a pond. And any kind of confinement they put it in is merely a pond. All right? And it's not only their environment that takes a big hit, it is their lifespan. Orcas in the wild have been found to live from anywhere from 50 to 90 years. That's almost, that's the same lifespan as a human being. And once they're put into captivity, it decreases all the way down to less than 10 years. Some studies show nine years, some studies show four years. Either or is ridiculous. From 50 to 90 to less than 10. Right. And that's just for orcas. That's not including any other animal out there right now. That's the only one of the only statistics that I found. Um, some examples of how this is extremely dangerous to not only the animals, but the, pe the, hand the handlers with them, the trainers, the staff members. Right. Uh, one example is San Diego, you know, Seawolf, Tilikum, 2010, killed his trainer during a practice session while, other, while guests of Seawolf were sitting there around the tank watching them, having their lunch, dinner, whatever it was. The, he grabbed his trainer, Drowned him, you know, thrashed around, killing him. I think it was actually a female trainer, one of the oldest trainers they had there. She's one of the best ones they had. And that's it, she's gone now. Another example is um, the white Bengal tiger from Siegfried and Roy. I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with them, but, you know, during a show, something they believe something startled the tiger, and he grabbed, she grabbed Roy by the neck and proceeded to drag him off stage. Now, it looks as if this was an attack, but uh, Roy has been quoted saying that he does not believe that his tiger meant any harm to him or anybody else there, but merely that she was startled and, like any good mother would do, would protect their young. And since this Bengal tiger had been with them for the Past, I don't know how many years now, since it was a cub, it came to view them both as her young ones. Unfortunately, Roy was the one closest to her, and she grabbed him. And now he's, you know, severely hurt. He's recovered. He's still alive, you know, thankfully. And um, one experience I've noticed too, like um, I had never been in the circus before. I, for my work. We went, we took, I worked with young kids, we took them to the circus. How many of you guys have been to the circus? Right. Um, Ringling Brothers, they have their lions and tigers that the lion tamer comes out with. During the show that I was watching, the tamer lost one of the sticks that he uses to keep control of the tigers and lions. He actually, the tigers swatted at it to make him drop it. And all he had left was his whip. And he's in there with roughly six of them still. So he drops his main thing to help him keep them in line. After this, I got a little scared and 
I was like, I really thought we were about to watch this guy get eaten by a tiger right now. <laughs> like, I was like, we brought little kids to this. And <laughs> 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 I was, I was sitting there, I'm, I was getting covered, my mouth was I was like, oh no. <laughs> but luckily, he was able to get it back, got the lion under control, the tiger under control, sent it back to the cage. These are all perfect examples of how <clears throat> keeping these wild animals confined can lead to very dangerous and unsafe conditions for both, for both the handlers and the animals. And uh, lastly, one more statistic is that um, According to CAPS, uh, I think it's Captive Animals Protective Services or something like that, that a study showed that a Copenhagen Zoo killed a healthy giraffe for n no reasons other than uh, overcrowding in their zoo. And this occurred because, according to CAPS as well, they said that at least 75,000 animals that are captured every year and sent to zoos are considered um, surplus. What is the need for so many animals to be captured if at least 75,000 of them are considered extras, so are unwanted or needed? And then just to turn around and put down healthy ones because of overcrowding. So I end with basically why have these animals captured. If it is shown and proven that it is unsafe for them, it is unsafe for the handlers, it is unsafe for the public to even do them due to outbreaks sometimes, the animals breaking out of their environments.